Says the optimal, the optimal mix of debt and equity maximizes firm value. Do you understand optimal? What does optimal mean? What does optimal mean? Another word for English, in English for optimal. This word it comes from Latin, so it's used in Spanish and Italian many languages. The best. Optimal mix best. So the best mix of debt and equity is what we're looking for in this part. So there's only two ways businesses can get money. The first way is debt. Debt is making fixed payments in the future. Interest payments and repaying principal. So when you were doing your project, if you did the market value of debt, you have to look in the 10K and find the uh, <coughs> loans, long-term debt, long-term loans and leases. Basically, you have to make a fixed payment in the future. Lease, you need to make a fixed payment. Okay, Loan, you need to make a fixed payment. That's debt. Principal is just the main part of the money. If you don't make these payments, you lose control of your business. So, you don't repay your loan to the bank, the bank is going to come in and take your business. They will sell your goods, try to get some money back. That's called bankruptcy. Okay? Uh, then the next way we can get money is equity. Uh, equity is uh, just money from stockholders or our own money. We can see also venture capital here. Venture means some investor who goes around looking for companies to invest in, also called angel investors. Usually that kind of person, they invest in 20 startup companies because it's very risky to invest in a startup company. So if I have $1 million, I'll invest uh, divide by 20. So I'll invest $50,000 in your company, $50,000 in your company. So 20 of you guys start a company. I'm a venture investor. I will invest 50,000 in each person. I hope just one of you, your company is successful. The other 19 might fail, right? Or 18 or 17 might fail. That's the risk I'm taking. If one of you is successful, maybe in a year my 50,000 stake could be worth two million or three million dollars. Okay, in the best situation, some venture capitalist who invested early in Facebook or LinkedIn or Google, okay? They made billions of dollars in the end. So that's the game they play. They don't invest, it's not the case that a venture capitalist will just invest in your company and then your company is not successful, oh no, I lost all my money. It's too risky. They invest in a lot of companies, okay? So we can get venture capital for equity. So here we can see debt against equity. Debt, fixed claim, tax deductible. We can get tax reduction. High priority in financial trouble. If there's a financial problem, who gets paid back first? The equity holders or the debt holders? <coughs> debt holders, right? If we go bankrupt, the debt, the people who hold the debt gets the first priority. Do you understand priority? Priority means more important. 
Okay, so if the company goes bankrupt, who do we have to pay first? The equity investor, the stockholder. Oh, we have the stockholder is going to lose almost all their money, right? We have to pay back the lender, but lender won't get back all their money. They might just get back 10% or 20%. Uh, right, fixed maturity. Maturity we use is time length, length of time. 10 years, 5 years, 30 years. Okay, so debt has a fixed time. And no management control. They don't, the lenders just lend us the money and go away. They don't tell us what to do, right? On the other hand, equity, they owner in the company, not tax deductible, very low priority, low importance in financial trouble. The stock price goes down a lot before the company goes bankrupt, it goes down to zero. We lose all our money. Okay? Yes, they can control the management. <coughs> Equity, they're the owners of the company. So, here we can see the life cycle of a company. Okay, here the company is at the uh, stage one, startup. Do you understand startup? The hardest part of a company, any company, is there's like a little line when you're starting up to get from here to here. It's a, it's a bridge. You have an idea, okay? And you want to make your idea into the startup company. That's a very hard step to pass over, right? Uh, once you pass over that step, it gets easier. Okay, then it starts growing. In this case, we can make get some venture capitalists to help us, okay? Or we can find another way to try and get over this step. But after this, we start up. Uh, we have very high need for external funding. Do you understand external? Outside funding. We don't have much money. Okay? Uh, we don't need much money from inside. We don't have any profit. Usually we, we start up here with owner's equity. Maybe bank debt. Sometimes the bank gives the loan for a startup company. You go into the bank, you make a presentation. The bank manager says, yes, I like your idea. I'll give you a loan. Okay? Because the banks are encouraged to give the loan to small business by the government and other areas. Okay? So if you have a good idea and you have some of your own money, the bank might say, yes, I like your idea. I'll give you a loan. Okay? Uh, then the next step is rapid expansion. Okay? Starting to uh, get grow. This is revenues. This is profit. We still need a lot of money. Okay? Here we can find venture capital or common stock. So now we went to some coffee morning and we met some angel investors. They really like our idea. They want to buy 50% of our company. Okay? They'll give us $100,000, $200,000 to buy 50% of our company. We say yes, not just for the money, but also we want the experience of the venture capital person to help us. They have network and contact. Okay? So our company continues to grow. We, we can also sell, at this stage, we can uh, sell some common stock, which means make our company public. So if we look at Facebook, Facebook was existing for five or six years before it went public. First, Facebook had the money by themselves. They probably not a loan from the bank, just their own money, right? Then they met the venture capitalists. The venture capitalists invested money. Do you know Bono from YouTube? Do you know YouTube? Yes. Famous rock band from Ireland. Bono is the lead singer. He was a venture capitalist. He has a lot of money from being a rock star. So he's, he invests money in startups. So he made a lot of money, right? So they, does Bono have good contacts and networks? Do you want Bono to invest in your company at the start? Famous rock star. If you're a social media company, is that going to help you? Yes, he has a lot of contacts. If he starts using Facebook and some of his friends start using Facebook, and then, right? So the venture capitalist can help. Then Facebook released a common stock just two years ago. Last year or two years ago, they start to sell stock to the public. So you can buy the stock in Facebook now, before you couldn't. Okay? Then, the Facebook is still here, it's still growing. 
Okay, here, uh, but it's not growing as fast as it was before. So we don't need money as much. Facebook don't need money. They needed a lot of money here, growing quickly. Don't need as much money here, growing slowly. Already have some earnings. Earnings here, not that high, but earnings now going up. Okay. Uh, they're going to use the public stock uh, again. Then, when we get to here, most companies get to here, it's kind of a stable stage. They can't grow anymore. So you can see Facebook nowadays, they're looking at, Mark Zuckerberg is involved in an internet project where he wants to expand the internet access to all the people who don't have internet access. Because a lot of people who have internet access already have Facebook. So he thinks to grow, he needs to bring the internet to more people, right? So they're trying to bring the internet to more people in countries where they don't have. But at this stage, the company starts to level off. So we don't really need new money. We don't have many new projects. We don't need that much more need money. So we can use the debt here. Okay? We can also use our own profits called retained earnings. This is mature growth growth. Then here do we need any money? Company is going down. We don't need any money, right? We don't have any there's no projects, no new projects. We don't need money. So instead of that, we pay back our debt, buy back our stock. So that's decline. So we can see that the, the funding, the life cycle depends also on the funding of the company. So this is the area where debt is the cheapest for the company. Here, debt can be quite expensive. Okay? But when it's up here, the already very uh, established company Okay, then we can get the debt at a lower price here. So, <clears throat> the question we're looking at is, is there a best mix of debt and equity? Okay. So, what are the benefits of using debt? What are the costs of using debt? So, we, we're going to discuss those kind of things. So, the benefits of using debt, tax, first one is tax benefits you did in your project, the pre-tax cost of debt and after-tax cost of debt. And then, second benefit we'll talk about is it disciplines the management. Do you understand discipline? Are you a disciplined person? You are? I had a football coach who used to use the three D's, three D's, dedication, determination and discipline. So uh, we want our management to be disciplined. Then uh, cost of debt, we have a bankruptcy cost, agency cost, and the loss of the flexibility. So in the bankruptcy, the debt holder will get control. We'll talk about uh, these two things more. So the first one is the tax benefits. So when you borrow money, you can deduct the interest expense from your income to arrive at the taxable in income. So we said that the tax benefit each year is, is the tax rate uh, multiplied by the interest payment. So how much interest are we paying? Right? Then we can deduct that money from our profit. Okay? We're paying 23% or 30% tax on our profit. So we already discussed this in the depreciation part. So the first proposition here is if everything else is equal, if a company has a higher tax rate, it's going to have more debt. Okay? So, if we have to pay a lot of tax, are we going to prefer debt or equity? Debt. Debt. Why right? we get more benefit? Our benefit is tax rate multiplied by interest payment. So we increase this number, we can get a higher tax benefit each year. So let's have a look at this question. You are comparing the debt ratios of real estate corporations, which pay the corporate tax rate. Real estate investment trusts, which are not taxed. Do you want to invest in real estate in the US? Hmm? These days, the price, last year, the real estate fund in the US went up by 20%, okay? 
the US economy improved, the stock market went up. These days the real estate price is going up. Real estate, we're talking about apartments, family homes, houses, office buildings. Okay? One way you can invest in real estate is buy your own house. But another way is if you don't have enough money, or just you don't want to have the trouble of buying and selling houses, is invest in a fund called Real Estate Investment Trust. Okay? That fund, people put their money together, goes out and buys houses, and you get the price of the fund goes up as the house prices go up. Okay? So anyway, this kind of fund, they're not taxed, but you're taxed. When you take your profit out of the fund, you pay tax. But the fund is not taxed. They don't pay tax. Okay? Uh, but they have to pay their earnings as dividends to their stockholders. So you get dividends as well. So which of these two groups would you expect to have the higher debt ratio? The real estate corporation or the real estate investment trust? So the real estate corporation is building houses, building office blocks. Okay? They're paying tax like any company. The second one is a fund, which doesn't pay tax. Which one do you think is going to have a higher debt ratio? Do you understand debt ratio? That's just short for debt to equity ratio. Okay, so which one will have higher debt? The one which doesn't pay any tax or the one which pays tax? So discuss with your partner. What do you think? A, real estate corporations pay a lot of tax. B, real estate investment trust. REIT doesn't pay any tax. Which one will have more debt? So discuss this question with your partner. Ask your partner, what do they think? Okay, do they have the same answer as you? Okay, so let's have a let's have a show of hands. Who says A, the real estate corporation will have higher tax? Who says B, the real estate trust will have higher debt? Okay, the correct answer is A, so most people were correct. Why? Who can tell me? Why do they will they have higher debt? They want to have tax benefits. They want to get tax benefits. Okay. If uh, they pay debt, they pay the corporate tax rate of 40%. Okay. They will save tax rate multiplied by their interest payment. Every